Hello, the Darkness344 here, and in today's video I'll be doing a somewhat comprehensive guide on several different tools you can use to um, build more complex parts for any uh, computer component or, or just redstone in general. Um, so this is the first part and I'll be covering um, command blocks and structure blocks on how to use it. So say you just have a, a base vanilla installation of the game, you don't want to add any um, add-ons or something if you're on Bedrock Edition or you don't want to add any mods on Java Edition then you'll be limited to using in-game commands and stuff however they still can be useful and I'll definitely be showing off which ones you should be using so the first thing you want to do is when when you're in your menu um, you're going to want to um, use templates for your world so for instance th this isn't this is kind of a more general tip uh, than anything if you have if you already have a world for like um, building your restaurant and stuff it's fine but instead of just creating a new world and having like a for instance if I go here you you, you could uh, change it to a super flat one uh, I think it's in here somewhere the the problem about this is it makes it just a grass world like this and that can be a bit annoying especially seeing as it isn't super deep either instead what you want to do is when you're on the create screen scroll down to the bottom and over here we have imported templates. These follow the file format .mc template, I'm pretty sure. And these will allow you to create a templated world like this, for instance, a void world, where the entire world is void, or for instance, a stone world, where the entire world would be stone. It's just not showing up on this picture, but you get the idea. And you can download these uh, off online. So for instance, mcpdl and that kind of stuff and you can just import them here. So the second thing you want to do is when you're in your world, uh, you of course want to change it to creative, peaceful so no mobs don't spawn, go on advanced, you're going to want to go over here and you want to turn on show coordinates. This is very important because you'll be using this all the time. Then these ones don't really matter too much. Normally I turn them off, so like this, because then they're not exactly too useful. Um, however, over here, the tile drops one, you want this to be off and that's because say you have a a line of blocks and you have redstone on top of them when you break those blocks the redstone will pop off as an item and it'll clog up your inventory so that's quite annoying you want to turn this off uh, you can also do this through commands and stuff but yeah then over here in the simulation distance this really just depends on how powerful your device is some if say you're on a phone or something that may not be the most powerful you might only be limited to like eight chunks or something Typically, I'd recommend setting it definitely over four and six. I'd, I'd recommend setting it around eight chunks. But if you have a more powerful computer, uh, then you can go 12 chunks. But it, it really, eight to 12 chunks, it doesn't matter too much. All this means is um, any um, redstone or any stuff beyond eight chunks will not be simulated. So say you have a, a redstone clock going, you go eight chunks away, um, the redstone clock will uh, momentarily pause until you go back into the the range of the eight chunks and this um, this range is like a circular range around the player as in like a circular range of chunks then on the multiplayer setting I normally turn it off but if you do want multiplayer game do it on invited players or friends and also do it as visitor because you can always give a player permissions later but you, d you don't want anyone like joining your game and griefing Cheats you will want on, but this is very important. And then the daylight cycle you will want it to be always day, just to be a bit easier to work with. Keep inventory you want on. And here, I've, this one's very important. Mob spawning and mob briefing, griefing, all the other these ones you want off. So we're going to turn them off like this. And the same with weather cycle. Then you want these two on and this one off. Then you can of course always add whatever resource or behavior pack you want. Uh, we'll get to that in the second part. So now here's um, one thing that you might sometimes need. You don't always need this, but um, sometimes you will, for, for certain blocks and stuff, you might want to uh, use some of these features for like just, just accessing, accessing newer content and stuff. So the first thing we do once we create the world um, is we're going to type um, that well there's two things we can do so for this first part I'm going to be focusing on command blocks and structure blocks 
Um, and in the second part, I'll be focusing on like tools that really, well, you, you'll need to install. So first of all, we can just type in slash give at p or at s, whatever, or your username and command underscore block. And then, so we have a command block. You don't always need a command block, but it can be useful for some things later. Then um, we're gonna wanna do the same uh, with a structure block. So structure underscore block. So there we go, we have the structure block now. So the first section will go over command blocks and the second section will go over structure blocks. So I've hopped back into my testing world over here so we can um, do some commands and stuff so it's a bit easier to show off. But, um, so we have the structure block and command block. And one thing that I'll also just tell you right now, which is quite a useful tip, is that say you place down a, a block which can contain MBT data for like a command block or structure block, then you like say modify it. So this, these are just the default settings of the structure block, but say we put the wires 10 maybe. So now we have this, right? But instead of, if, if you're doing this multiple times, you're placing multiple ones of these down, you don't wanna have to keep modifying it. So what you can do is hold control button and middle mouse on PC anyway. If you are on mobile or tablet or something, you might need, or even Xbox, you I think you can plug a keyboard and mouse in and it'll work. But yeah, it's, it's a bit annoying. But there we go, and it saves the data that's inside. So it'll say the little plus data underneath. So this also works for barrels. For instance, I have, um, if we put an item in a barrel, say this slab, then we hold control, middle mouse, um, it'll give us the barrel with the slab inside, as you can see. So this is quite useful if you're like working with hexadecimal values, uh, you can like pre-fill some barrels and stuff with like certain values. So now onto commands. Um, as I said earlier, you want uh, the command positions um, on because it's going to be slightly difficult without. So first of all, uh, let's just go find something to copy. Okay, um, this will do. So what we want to be able to do is be able to like copy different things as well as stack uh, layers and stuff. And let's work it with uh, this one over here, for instance. So you can use a command block for like as a structure block, but you I just recommend using a structure block instead. But first of all, let's just go through some basic commands. So we can use the slash set block to set a block. And if you hold shift, well, you, if you write the tilde, which is this squiggly little symbol in, um, we can just set a block uh, where the current position is. And then we can also use the same command, uh, but instead of just doing tilde, 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 uh, representing a relative x, relative y, relative uh, z or z, um, if we do say tilde 10, like this, it will actually place a block uh, relative to you, but 10 blocks ahead. And we can do the same with uh, doing it minus. So if we do minus 10, uh, like this, as you can see, it's placed it behind us. Well, where it's placed it, 10 blocks behind us, basically. And that's the same with, uh, you can do this for all of them. So if we go 10, 10, and 10, it should place it somewhere uh, in a corner somewhere over here, yeah. So, so that's how you do that. So set block command is quite useful. Um, but the next command is, uh, I'd say more useful is the slash fill command, slash fill like this. And we can fill an area, so we can use the relative. So your first set of coordinates is going to be from and then to. So if you're copying something, you're going to want to find the lower corner like this. So if we go down like this over here, and then we're going to want to find the upper corner like this. And when you copy, well, when you fill it, it'll be from this corner to this corner. So if we go down here, you can either take note of the chords in the top left-hand corner, just write them down. So write those ones down, then write those ones down. Or you just only want to write one set down. So write those ones down. So for instance, if I just write those down real quick, and then if we go up into the corner over here, sorry if my mic did something weird, uh, then we're just going to do slash fill. Well, actually, I don't really want to do it on this bit. So instead of here, I'll go up here instead. Yeah, this will do. So if I go here, we're going to do slash fill those original coordinates, which was minus one, three, nine, six, um, 35, 44. And then the two will be tilde, 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 because we're in the, the corner we want to do it. And if we just say dirt, as you can see, it'll fill it all in with dirt. And it also fills those blocks. So just make sure um, 
you, you know the blocks will get filled in as well. So that basically just saves you from noting down two sets of coordinates. You only have to note down one and then you can do the other as the relative to where you are. But yeah, so you, so you just stand in the place where you want it. So the reason why we got a command block is because you can do, uh, so with the, the tilde, you can also put them in the command block. For instance, if we go like this, um, the tilde's instead of being relative to the player, it will now be relative to, to, to the command block. So if you're copying something, say I want to copy these blocks over here, we can place this down and we can have a uh, slash, um, I think it's clone actually on Minecraft slash clone. Uh, yeah, there we go. So if we do clone tilde 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 to tilde 5, tilde 5, tilde 5, and then we're going to paste it in tilde 10, tilde 10, tilde 10. And of course you can click this button to get an extended thing of that. But I'm not gonna go too much into command blocks because you can just do it in the chat over here. So now when we activate this command block, so like this, so let's just do it with this. As you can see, it's cloned all of this relative to the command block over here. And if we do it again on this one, as you can see, it's, it's relative to the command block. So now moving on to the second part of the video, which is structure blocks. Um, this is where they are very useful. They're, they're much better than command blocks, I'd say, for just copying and pasting things, because you actually get a visual outline like this, and they have a few more settings as well. So when you first open this up, um, there are quite a few different things, which may be a bit overwhelming, as you can see, we have quite a few. Um, but I'll just go over all of them in a tiny bit of detail. I'm, I'm not going to cover like certain things like integrity and stuff because it's not really too useful. Um, but I'll try to go over uh, them in a fairly short time span, hopefully. So first of all, structure blocks are very useful for like copying and pasting different things. And the way we can do this is go into a structure block, build something inside this highlighted area. So for instance, if we just place some blocks down like this, um, we can call it a name over here, so if we just call it hello, uh, if I can spell correctly, and then uh, we can copy and paste this, So because we can turn it into a structure basically. So over here we have some size, uh, you can go up to 64 uh, by, I, th I think this is kind of unlimited, it's just however, whatever the current height is in the chunk, I can't remember what the, um, it used to go up to 255, but it's, it's been expanded so I, I can't remember what that number is but this can go over 64 so like we can type in 100 for instance but all the other ones can only go up to 64 so if we type in 100 for the Z um, it goes back to 64 which is kind of a bit annoying because you're limited to this size but it's a fairly reasonable area and it won't um, completely crash your game if you're trying to load like a lot of these in. so what you do if you want a larger area you're just gonna want to have to place more structure blocks so, so that's how you do the area. And let me just break and replace this so we get smaller area. We also have offsets. So if we say put an offset like this, uh, it just offsets the area selecting, which is very useful if you don't want to also copy the structure block because on its default settings like this, it'll copy itself, which can be a bit annoying when you're placing a lot of them down. But now we have a button called detect. So, so when you place it down, it's on save mode, but we have this button called detect. And what we can do is place down another structure block, uh, say over here. And if we turn this one onto corner mode, um, and we go into this one, we click detect. As you can see, it will act as a corner. However, it only does it from this corner to this corner over here, which can be a bit annoying. Uh, typically, I don't really use this because um, I, I prefer just doing it manually. It's, it gives you a bit more finer control and you can always uh, do offsets and readjust, whereas the corner one, you'd have to keep flying over, rebreaking and replacing. So now that's, that's how we save it. So if we just save it as hello, uh, hello. We have these buttons down here, save, export, reset. Reset just resets it. Save, um, there's two different modes. There's save in memory or save to disk. So regarding save in memory versus save to disk, uh, typically you'll want to save in memory um, if, if you don't like, if you don't want to use your structure again, because what save in memory will do is it'll just save it to your current game session. So say I, um, uh, well, quit the game and then load the game back up, I won't be able to um, load that stru the, the structure that I created in again. Um, however, save to disk will save it to your uh, world uh, database, I guess, 
and this will mean that when you load um, it back in, you'll well when you restart your game, uh, you'll still be able to access that structure. So this can be um, useful if you want to um, save the structure, but just remember that um, names are limited. So the more you use um, th this, will be a, it'll get a bit messy because you'll have lots saved to disk. But so if we do save to memory, press save. Over here we can um, load it again. So if we load it like this, we can just load the structure in. And also just be careful of offsets. Uh, so you want to change offsets so you don't delete the floor. Um, we have a few features, uh, what log, remove. Um, you have rotation features, mirroring. Animation mode, you don't want to touch. You want to keep on none because if you do it like this, place by layer or place by block, while it will look cool placing in block by block, it will break stuff like resident torches, for instance. So we had a torch here. Uh, what happens if it places the redstone torch, then the block? Well, the redstone torch will be placed, then it will break because there's no block here. It will be an air block at the current time. So don't use that, it, it breaks things. So now the other save features we have is export, which will export the structure as an actual file that you can load into other worlds and stuff. Um, I think it saves it as like a, a structure file. I can't remember exactly. But yeah, that is pretty useful because then we can load in and click import and stuff. And then the last thing I want to cover in structure blocks is that we also have 3D export, um, which instead of um, exporting it as a structure, it will export it as a 3D file, uh, specifically a .glb file, which you can open up in 3D software like Blender and uh, or just a default my uh, the default Microsoft viewer and then you can use it for like animation and stuff. Personally, I wouldn't actually use this one. I, I used to use it for thumbnails and stuff, but I've, I've stopped because sometimes it won't actually like um, fully capture core, like just sides of blocks and stuff. It will like cut them off. It's, it's just slightly bugged at the moment. I, I think they'll fix it though in a, in a version later. So instead I recommend the tool MC Prep. Um, and that that's a tool on Blender, which uh, well, you can install the blender to do like minecraft animation and stuff, but personally I just use it for like rendering um, Stuff like this and yeah, so now let's talk about stacking stuff with structure blocks So I've built this uh, little example over here It's just a simple XOR gate with some outputs here and here and we're going to be going over how we can stack it vertically um, I'm not really going to cover horizontal because it's pretty much the same just horizontal instead of vertical But vertical components can have a little bit more trickery to them because um, you're selecting typically you select a two by two area like this well at least too high or oh, the word is not working but um, with a structure block you do that um, for instance let's just place a structure block down here and we're going to want it to capture everything uh, typically you want the height as just two like this um, we're only doing this so let's just change the offset uh, to zero so we can capture the area so, but as you can see, uh, when we're stacking the two block high thing, we, we're cutting some components off. These won't actually be stacked and that can be a bit annoying. So this part of the video will just basically go through how to actually stack something uh, where you don't have any like annoying cut off like this. Because if we stack this, we'd have this glass tower like this, but it would only have redstone every like this because all of these ones would be cut off by the air block over here. So the first thing you're going to want to do is, let me actually just build this example back up again, um, is with your creation, you're going to want to try select the stuff with the most of the components on top of the solid blocks. So the solid blocks will be the bottom uh, corner and the bits with the components on will be the top corner. You might run into a few issues where you have uh, kind of like layers like this, where you have a block component, but then you also have a block then uh, because the, the component is over here, but you also have components over here because uh, and that can be a bit annoying, but um, I'll address how to do this. Actually, let's set that example back up because it's quite a useful example. So we want to be stacking this. So what we can do is, first of all, we're going to find uh, one of, just just find a corner. I typically go with this corner over here because if we place it here, if we place the structure block here, we're going to have a bit of difficulty because then we're going to have to tweak with the offsets, and that's just a bit annoying. So we're going to want to find the top corner like this. So uh, because the blocks will be the, the lower corner and the components will be the top corner, 
because we're stacking with a layer of two. Um, the structure block has a default of a minus one offset, so we're going to just place it like this. It'll just be easier to work with. And I'm actually going to place it one block out like this, so we can capture these levers as well. And because there's nothing over here, but we don't want to capture the structure block, we're going to do an offset by one. I think it's that direction. No, it's not. Uh, let me turn that back to zero. Um, I should have just looked at the colors. <laughs> that would have worked out a bit easier. Um, as you can see, the, the colors uh, correspond to X, Y, Z. So Y, X, and Z. And there we go. So now that the structure block is outside of the capture. So this is all our capture. Then we're going to set our Y height to two like this. So when you're capturing this, but since we want to capture the whole thing, we're going to expand this a bit more. So for instance, let's go um, eight, maybe we're just going to go eight by eight by two. And that seems to have captured everything. Um, if you don't want it to like place air here, say you had something else in here that wasn't being stacked, but you don't want it to be destroyed by the structure block. You can like fine tune it a bit more. Uh, turn it down a bit however because there's nothing here i'm not going to care about it too much so by default if we just stack this it's going to remove a couple of blocks and it's going to break some things for instance if we just name this um stack actually we'll just name it hello again <laughs> um creative i know so i click save and now um well we could either just stack it on top but for now just to show that it's going to break things i'm going to go over here and do it instead so we don't actually break the original model so over here we can place this down click load type in the structure hello the other thing you can do is go over to this one hold control middle mouse button place it down here and it will have the border and the name input then just go load instead and it should load it so then we press load. So either you can just press load here or you can use say like a redstone block or a lever to do it um, like this. Um, that destroys the structure block of course because we don't have any um, offset values. But what I recommend doing is creating one, uh, creating a load one with some offset values all built in. So then you, and then middle mousing it so we get the data so you can just keep placing them down and it won't have any issues. So now as we can see, we've loaded it in, right? Um, let me just break it. Um, and we have this, but as you can see, it's missing a couple things with like the rest of the stuff. So if I just place that back there, um, this is quite annoying because when we stack this, um, so we just go the same one again. So uh, load in, hello. Um, I'm gonna have to break some of this like this so say we want to stack um we'll just we'll just do it for um a couple like this for now we'll just do three of them so this is also going to be hello and so is this one over here so now um we're just going to load them one by one i'll just use levers so actually that's two at once and as you can see we've stacked it nicely over here but as i've said earlier um, you didn't select the redstone properly, so well I didn't <laughs> so we have to either place it manually and also those repeaters over there So we're gonna have to place them all manually again, which can be very annoying if the components like in something um, And then of course these ones where we wanted um, the glass block to go through So we're gonna have to of course replace all of these with glass so the signal can actually travel up like this um, that's very annoying. We don't want that to happen at all. So on our original model when we're selecting it all the blocks that need to be in um, The thing but on their own will break so say like redstone torches will break if this gets set to an air block But solid blocks can just float like this this block can just float But say like a redstone torch or redstone dust cannot float as you can see So all these blocks we're going to want to go one under our zone and place that block down. So as you can see, this block of red, well, this redstone dust is just outside the zone, and this block down here is outside the zone too. But because um, we have the block here and the redstone dust here, when we stack a bunch of them, this redstone dust will be placed on the model below, well, the the structure below uh, block over here. So so it'll stack fine if we have this. Then we want the glass to be in too. So we're just gonna place. Oops, I broke two. We're going to place the block of glass here with the redstone. Let me just fix this real quick. This one we can just break. We don't actually need it at all. Now we want to do this redstone over here. So we're going to go down. It really doesn't matter what block you use down here because it's not going to be 
um, in the model anyway. So we'll just place a piece of redstone down there. Now we've got this. Uh, there's one last thing, which is the repeater. So we're going to go under, down like this. Place the repeater down here. We, we don't actually need this. It'll just stack properly. And now we've done this. We can save it as hello. Save like that. And then when we load it, um, let's actually go back to... We'll just go here for now. Um, you can, of course, load it on top of that first layer, but I'm just going to do it here. So what you, what you do if you wanted to load it on that layer, you'd go just from save to load and, and it'll just work like that. We're going to keep on save for now. So we have a copy of the original module. Mod, module. So over here, uh, load it in. Hello. Like this. And I'm actually going to middle mouse button this. So control, middle mouse button. So we can place a couple down like this. So as you can see, because the layer is too high, we want a gap of one between each one because it's so so you can tell um, if it's perfect because the lines won't um, overlap. So if we had one here, as you can see, this blue line's inside of this one and it'll break things. So you, so you don't want that. But now we've got these, we can just activate them. So either go press load like that or just activate them with redstone. Uh, I can't place redstone lever down for some reason we'll just go like this and what you're going to want to do is be very careful uh, which ones you load so I'm going to load from the bottom uh, up to the top and that's because um, if we do it from the top to bottom some of the redstone will break so from the so if you're working on vertical components do it from the bottom up to the top when you're activating them so like this and let's just break these as well and we have our model over here so there may be a few things you want to do so on the lot the very last one you place down you're going to want to place your blocks again or whatever if you needed them so for instance like this um but all the others will have the redstone down properly and all the repeaters over here and all the redstone like this so yeah that's that's how you stack so that's pretty much all i'm going to cover in this first part of the video um, and that should give you a, a very good vanilla experience. Just just make it a bit faster, especially if you're building like large things like AOUs and stuff. Um, you don't really want to be building each layer by hand. It, it just gets to a point where you're you're wasting time um, effectively. So that's why I've kind of um, I've I've swapped from doing things by hand to doing things with like structure blocks or world edit. Which um, the second part of this video. Um, which I, I don't know when it will be uploaded because I haven't recorded it yet, of course. Um, but the second part will cover um, external things, uh, namely world edit command. So not command, um, the world edit, not marketplace. The world edit um, behavior pack over here. We can go into behavior packs and we have world edit by SI Silicon. So it'll cover that add on. And then it'll also cover um, Amulet, which is a tool in development still however i've been using it for ages now like all of this stuff was made by amulet and stuff and it's an external program so instead of just being built into the game it's external um but i'll cover it a bit more in that video so yeah stay tuned for part two um i hope you like this video please like and subscribe and i'm out